Buongiorno a tutti, and thank you for joining me again today for another conversation with Opera Viva faculty. I had a chance to speak with Lisa Sylvester. Lisa is the chair of the voice department at the USC Thornton School of Music, and she's a vocal coach each summer at Opera Viva in Verona. I'm excited to bring my conversation with Lisa to you today. Here it is. Hi, Lisa, how are you? I'm doing very well, Monica. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Uh, I'm excited to be here. All right, let's go. Okay. Why don't we start by you telling me a bit about what you do at the USC Thornton School of Music and what you do at Opera Viva in Verona during the summers? Okay. Uh, first of all, I am a chair of vocal arts and opera at the Thornton School of Music uh, at USC. Um, and that entails a lot of different things, <laughs> um, organizing the department and the kinds of uh, activities we do and, and organizing and coordinating curriculum and things like that. Uh, personally, uh, as you know, I am a pianist, a collaborative pianist, um, a vocal coach, conductor. I teach classroom classes and things like song literature and foreign language diction, uh, including Italian. And I also uh, coach singers as they prepare for recitals and uh, juries and other outside auditions. And so at Opera Viva, um, I just I focus on the coaching aspect. So the singers that come, I work with them to prepare their performances, whether it's the sacred music repertoire or their aria or their opera scene. And I wonder if you could explain the difference between a vocal coach and a voice teacher? <laughs> Great question, Monica. <laughs> um, as uh, many people might not understand the difference. And uh, let me you know, uh, start by saying that vocal teachers really concentrate on how the singer produces the sound, how they um, develop their instrument, you know, which is inside their body, uh, and all of the mechanics and the physiology that goes on with producing sound. Um, you know, voice teachers are really focused uh, very much of the time on that. And vocal coaches really um, work on the musical phrasing, certainly the diction of, of what, whatever language the singer is singing in, of course, at Opera Viva, the, this would be Italian. Um, and things like the character and, and how to uh, infuse the character into the music. So we work a lot on, on that interpretation. Uh, so I hope that helps. So I wonder if you could tell me the difference, Lisa, between coaching a Mozart aria versus coaching a Puccini aria. Uh, I would love to talk about that. Um, so as we know, uh, Mozart and Puccini lived in uh, different time periods, different worlds, um, and their, their music reflects that. So in singing a Mozart aria, um, there are certain, um, how should we say, stylistic aspects of the classical period. Um, and sometimes that involves some ornamentation at cadence points and things like that. So we, we talk a lot about what might be appropriate uh, in terms of ornamentation. And Mozart uh, rhythm, is, rhythm is absolutely, um, you know, central to his arias, to his ensembles, to his operas. And so that rhythmic integrity must be there in, in Mozart. In Puccini, of course, we're talking about uh, late Romantic, even into the early 20th century um, time period. And the expressivity, the rubato that you can um, utilize in, in a Puccini aria is much different. And so that ability to stretch time a little bit and to give, you know, take more time here and then put it back in the other part of the phrase. Uh, that's the kind of thing that happens in Puccini that would not necessarily happen in Mozart. So when a singer begins to learn an aria they have never studied before, what's more important, Lisa, learning the melody or learning the text? <laughs> um, I would definitely say learn the text first. Prima la parola, <laughs> as the Italians will say. Um, you must know what you're saying. You must know what the character 
is saying uh, in this particular aria, what comes before that, what might come after that, uh, you must, the singer must have that uh, whole intention and understanding of the text first. Um, first, as if it's, we're, we're talking about an aria, first read it like a monologue um, in the Italian uh, and have a working English trans translation that you could also speak as a monologue idiomatic in English. Um, and then to understand the stresses of the Italian language and uh, where the double consonants really need to be emphasized, where the, uh, in some cases the vowels need to be longer and more lush. So uh, absolutely the text first and then overlay the music uh, and often text in rhythm before you put the melody to it. Um, I think singers will find that that process will um, will ingrain the aria into their whole body in a way that's more holistic and will last longer. Like, why don't you tell me about your first time ever visiting Italy? I will. Um, it was um, several years ago. I was, believe it or not, studying in Paris as a you know junior year semester abroad program as an undergrad. And uh, the semester, you know, went through to the end of January and there was going to be um, a holiday break around Christmas time. And uh, it didn't make sense to fly back to the United States. So um, I uh, went to Rome and visited cousins of mine. I have Italian roots and it was really exciting uh, to meet my Italian cousins that, that live right out of, uh, outside of Rome. And, and then from there, uh, I visited Venice and, uh, and a few other places and swore that I would definitely get back <laughs> for, for longer. And um, a couple of years later, um, I, I also was working on a project both uh, in France and in Italy. So I got back then and then it was several years. And what was really um, meaningful and poignant about my first summer um, at Opera Viva, which was 2015, is that I was able to coordinate it um, with a family trip uh, in honor of my parents and my grandparents, where several of my siblings uh, and you know families uh, all came together, visited my cousin in Rome, went to two hometowns of our grandparents uh, in the Abruzzi region, Pacentro and Villa Barreia and we're able to see uh, our, you know, our grandparents' hometowns. Lisa, would you be willing to share with me one of your favorite Opera Viva memories? Absolutely. Uh, although I have several, <laughs> I will talk about one, uh, which was in our first summer together in 2015. And uh, we were at the arena. And if you look, you can see uh, that behind me. And we were seeing Tosca and uh, we were seated such that we were high up, but yet we were very much uh, stage right. And just the way we were positioned, we could see certainly, you know, the action on stage from a side view, but we could also see the backstage and we could see how everyone lined up to, to get into place, to go on stage um, and with all of the mechanics and things that happened behind stage. So in some ways that was, you know, as much <laughs> as the performance as what was going on on stage. And I'll never forget because I can't remember the exact moment, but there was a certain curtain thing that got stuck on, you know, one of the set pieces and to see the stage hands running behind trying to loosen the, the you know piece of fabric curtain whatever it was and it was again like i said that was almost more drama than what was going on in front of the stage but it was it was just uh like nothing else i've ever seen well lisa as if being in italy or being in verona weren't enough what other things do you find appealing about opera viva well one thing uh i felt even you know, soon into the first year of the program uh, in 2015, when I started, was this wonderful camaraderie among the faculty. 
Um, I made great friends with them. I learned from them. I was inspired by them and had lots of fun with them. Um, you know, we really work as a team as we work with the students and we each compare notes about the kinds of things we work on with, uh, with the students. Um, and we celebrate their successes together, at, which is just so wonderful to see a student, you know, get from point A to point B, you know, within the three weeks. Um, so that's just been great. Um, we have enjoyed fabulous meals together, uh, lots of gelato, <laughs> and of course, spritz. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, it's just a joy to be with them, both uh, in the work that we do and, and in our free time. And it's, it's been a pleasure to keep in touch with them over the years, throughout the year, um, and just, you know, continue the friendships that we, that, you know, had begun that first summer for me anyway. Well, Lisa, it's really been great catching up with you. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Oh, I was happy to do it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Monica. No, uh, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you again very soon, but I think it's getting close to spritz time, so I shouldn't take up any more of your time. <laughs> I'll just say saluti, and we'll see you very, very soon. Saluti. <laughs> ciao, ciao, ciao. Ciao. Well, I certainly enjoyed my conversation with Lisa Sylvester, and I hope you did too. I'd like to close out today's video by sharing a performance by an Opera Viva student. Nate Owen joined us in Verona during the summer of 2018 when he was an undergraduate student at the University of Idaho. Nate is now a graduate student studying voice and opera at USC Thornton School of Music. So I thought it was appropriate to share Nate's performance here at the end of my conversation with Lisa Sylvester. Please enjoy this performance by Nate Owen singing Panis Angelicus by Frank. Panis Angelicus. 